Time for our weekending strategy session with political commentator Jerry Nichols coming to us from downtown Toronto. In Regina, we have Sally Hauser, an associate principal with Navigator, and with me in studio, Sarah Bain of Hill and Knowlton Strategy. Hello to the three of you. Hello. So I want to start with this Angus Reid poll on Canada-China relations. So I want to bring it up here. So they were, people were asked Trudeau's handling of the situation with China. 33% said very good or good. 52% said poor, very poor. And 15% said, well, not sure, can't say. So, you know, um, I'm asking, I want to ask you, Jerry, where would you stand on this poll? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'd actually be a little more sympathetic to the prime minister because I think he's, he's doing the best he can with the cards which have dealt him. He's dealing with a very aggressive country in China. And I think Canadians would more or less give him the benefit of the doubt if it wasn't for the soap opera surrounding John McCallum and the firing of John McCallum. I think that really hurt the Liberal brand. That really kind of got Canadians saying, hey, does Trudeau know what he's doing? This looks like he's, he's screwing this up. It doesn't look like he's doing very well at it. And I think this provides ammunition for both the Conservatives and the Democrats because it kind of feeds into their narrative. Hey, you know what? Look at Justin Trudeau. He's incompetent. He doesn't know what he's doing. So, yeah, I think this is... This is I don't think it's, it's, it's that big a deal for the Liberals. I think people will, will are, have other concerns and other priorities. But it's just another little thing that the, uh, the opposition can throw against Trudeau in the next election. John McCallum, a soap opera star, you know, Sally, <laughs> Canada was literally but sucked into the, the U.S.-China trade war. Now, is it surprising that Canadians feel that Trudeau is not on top of this? I don't think it's that surprising. I mean, I, I think if you were to look at kind of, uh, you know, the average Canadian, is this something they're going to be voting on or not, kind of Trudeau's handling of this? Probably not. Um, I, you know, I'm going to be with Jerry here as well. I've got a level of sympathy, uh, you know, for, for the government and, and for the, the prime minister on this. Uh, you know, if we're talking about negotiations or, or making a deal or, you know, Canada doesn't have a whole lot of cards uh, versus China in that respect. We're kind of, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're a little outgunned, uh, frankly. So you can kind of try to stand strong and, and, and say what you want. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the McCallum uh, situation was very interesting to me. Uh, one, it's, it's kind of unusual that you see even a diplomat like that go out uh, you know, in front of the media in that way. That's not a normal thing. And then to make, frankly, what looks like such a hash of it to the point where uh, the, the prime minister has publicly got to take you out certainly doesn't do anything to help instill confidence uh, in the way this, uh, this foreign affairs issue is being handled. Oh, well, that's interesting. What, what, what Sally is saying is really he was dealt a lousy hand, uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. So... What can he do to change these poll numbers, if anything? Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to start off by saying I want the record to show that on February 1st, 2019, all three of us can agree on one of the questions. Yes, that's true. <laughs> this is a historic <laughs> day. Yes. Like so this <laughs> issue has brought us together, really. Now, I would just, I want to point out that obviously polls uh, have to be taken in a context. If you were to ask this very same question of this very same sample, but changing the words of, do you disagree? How do you feel about Canada's role in international law and respecting international law, we would see very different numbers. So it's very important to look at how the question was asked and who it was asked to. So in this case, I think that this is a very well, complex who was asked to, uh, a sample, a sampling of, a of sample. Canadians. Exactly. And if you had changed that question to just a couple of words different, which was, do you think that Trudeau is respecting international rule of law? your numbers would look very different. And that's what this is about. This is about a decision where Canada decided they were between a rock and a hard place, Canada and China, um, US and China, pardon, and they decided to respect the international rule of law. That's, that's the decision that they've made. And it happened to put them into this position. Yes, but could they have taken another decision? That is the question before... Not the... if you are looking very clearly at respecting the international laws that we... the international treaties and laws that we respect. And that's what they've done here in this case. You know, we get a feeling that we're going to keep talking about this China issue for a long time. This week, the Americans laid their charges, you know, sort of solidifying their case 
we all talked about alleged wrongdoing, alleged criminal activity. Does that help Canada, or is that putting us into deeper trouble? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you that, Jerry. Well, I, I, I think it just sort of puts us where we were, uh, where we are right now, uh, and that is we're, we're facing a situation where uh, the Americans probably have a legitimate claim uh, in this case, um, and it puts Canada at odds with China, which is uh, it's not negotiating with China or with Canada; it's bullying Canada. Let's be clear about that. Um, to Sarah's point, is Canada respecting the rule of law? Yeah, but I bet you if they could go back in time, they might be a little bit less respectful of international law and somehow let this, you know, fit through the cracks a little bit or, or, or make it go away somehow. Because, yeah, this is... Trudeau and the Liberal government are, it seems to me anyway, in a no-win situation here. No matter what they do, they're going to come out looking bad. Sally, this is real politic, right? And they keep telling us it's the rule of law, the rule of law, but I'm told by intelligence experts that perhaps we could have prevented this by, by perhaps telling, you know, the, the CFO or not letting the CFO land here in Canada. So is this... Uh, and we did the Americans a big, big favor at a time when they're not doing us any favors. So have, have we, you know, gone too far in our obligations? You know, I, I, I think if, if the, the time was had back, maybe a, a word to say that uh, perhaps this plan could land, uh, land in Seattle as opposed to in Vancouver, uh, <laughs> certainly would have uh, saved, saved Canada a whole lot of, of headache. Because this issue is, frankly, between the United States and China. And here we are, uh, the third party in all this, with, frankly, the least amount of power, uh, have somehow been, been brought into uh, Donald Trump's kind of hostage cake and bargaining chip uh, game. Um, you know, I, I think, it, again, back to if, if you hadn't had the uh, the issue with uh, the, the ambassador to China, Mr. McCallum, this probably would have died a little bit and become, okay, this is between the United States and China, nothing to do with us. But we keep kind of being rolled back into it, wrapped back into it. And, you know, previously I said, are a lot of Canadians voting on this in the next election? Probably not. But if it continues to become a problem, all of a sudden that can flip very quickly. Okay, well, I'll get to another uh, sort of difficult issue for the Trudeau government. Yes, the Trans Mountain Pipeline. So yesterday, the parliamentary budget officer said Ottawa paid sticker price for it. So the a high end of the PBO's estimate, basically. So we're in an election year, and the PBO is telling us that every day this pipeline is not built. It is costing taxpayers because, yes, congratulations, we own it. It's costing taxpayers every day $2 million. So what I want to know is how do you think, Jerry, the Liberals can spin their way out of this one? Well, I think the Liberal spin is going to be, uh, does it cost a lot of money? Yes, but you can't put a price on saving, you know, Alberta's industry. We're investing in Canada and one day we'll sell it and we'll do all, you know, we'll do really well and it'll have a happy ending. I think the Conservatives are going to say, well, you know what, this shows how liberal incompetence of getting this pipeline built is costing Canadian taxpayers, you know, don't vote for Trudeau. And I think the NDP are going to say, why are Canadian taxpayers, you know, spending money in a pipeline that shouldn't be built? So I think that's the, the narratives that are going to be spun around this whole thing. But I think at the end of the day, the issue here really isn't the cost of the pipeline. I think the issue is, should it be built? And if it should be built, how are you going to get it done? Those are the two real nagging questions that you're going to, which are going to harass Trudeau from now until Election Day. Sally, will it harass Trudeau until Election Day? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be increasingly, uh, you know, a big issue. And it is, you know, rightly or wrongly, but there's that emotional connection um, with pipelines, carbon tax. So I think energy issues are going to be a significant, uh, uh, you know, a significant factor as we go into the next election. What I find interesting right now is uh, that uh, the Liberal government and, uh, and Prime Minister Trudeau are finding out what it's like to be a pipeline company in Canada, uh, you know, in terms of the difficulty of actually getting something built. 
The, the Liberals have not reformed the National Energy Board, which they promised to do. Uh, you've got, they're creating regulatory uncertainty uh, with Bill C-69. Um, and, you know, and if it continues to be delayed, it is going to cost us a lot more money. So it's, you know, trying to put some level of certainty in front of people one way or the other, but we're caught in this kind of no man's land, and I think that's going to hurt them in the next election. So, Sarah, something interesting happened yesterday. The finance minister was asked about this, and he said, actually, we didn't pay $4.5 billion for it. We paid $4.1 because of the capital gains tax that the government got back and sort of spin this this way. Um, do you think this is the kind of issue that will hurt them? Hmm. I think doing nothing would have hurt them far more, and that's one of the things that in the report in the PDO report... Doing nothing would have made it go away. Oh, absolutely not. This issue would not, not have gone away. Do you think that Canadians in Alberta would have just allowed us to, a government, to just let such a huge uh, energy project just disappear without any uh, any protest? Of course they wouldn't have. And nor would the rest of Canadians, I think. And this, like, if we look back, we have to remember that this was a project that wasn't going to move forward without government intervention. We have... And I've been hearing it. The ministers, uh, the prime minister has said 99% of our energy exports go to the U.S. How can we as a country rely on one country to be our major exporter? We have to diversify. And this project will allow us to get to get it to other markets. Um, but also, I just, I just think that the government was in a very difficult position at the time and needed to make a decision. This was the decision they took. And I believe that doing nothing, the, the report doesn't address what it would have cost Canadians if we had done nothing. No, and it doesn't, it doesn't also That's address true. what it would, what it will eventually do for us, for Canada, for job creation, uh, as well as exporting to a diversified market. That's not addressed in this report either. Well, that's all the time. You know, we could go on and on about this report because it was pretty interesting. So thank you to the three of you. Have a great weekend and try, try to stay warm. You too.